Hello everyone and welcome back to Shark Bites, the best place online to get your shark fix. Today's episode is going to be somewhat of a different one as it's sort of to do with sharks in the news but it's also going to be more of a general commentary from me on this issue. In this episode we're going to be discussing the supposed increase in the number of shark bites and fatalities in Australia. Now a few weeks ago I was approached by a journalist from The Sun who wanted an interview to accompany a piece that they were writing about shark attacks. The Sun has a pretty sketchy history when it comes to writing articles about sharks and I often tend to roll my eyes at the sensationalist headlines they put out splashed across social media. <sighs> my expertise also is not in shark attacks and shark bites so I didn't feel like it was a good idea to give my two cents to this newspaper. However, that doesn't mean that I can't talk to you at home about this. As of a few weeks ago, there have been 21 shark attacks in Australia this year, although I'm pretty sure there have been a couple more since then. Of these shark attacks, seven of them at the time of writing this episode proved to be fatal. This has prompted several media outlets to essentially freak out and start writing some crazy articles about killer great white sharks that are stalking and hunting humans. Looking at this a little bit closer, if we only take the unprovoked interactions with sharks, it works out to around 18 shark attacks this year in Australia, which is about the average from the last five years or so. Fatalities, however, have seen a 33% increase on previous years, and on the face of it, that appears to be quite an alarming increase. Looking at it from a pure numbers perspective though, it's gone from a 10% fatality to a 33% fatality because the number of fatal shark attacks has increased from about one or two to maybe six or seven. So how do we explain this? Well, it's a little bit difficult to find some kind of causal pattern between these fatal shark attacks because each attack is so unique. It could essentially be down to a few different factors. For example, the species or size of the shark, the location of the bite on the body, or the location where the bite took place. For example, was the person a long distance from shore and medical attention? It's incredibly unlikely that we have suddenly become prey species for these sharks. And it's more likely that humans are now just overlapping with the geographic ranges of these large predatory sharks. As the human population increases year on year and with more and more people entering the water, these interactions are likely set to increase. There has also been suggestion that climate change may be playing a role in shifting the home ranges of these animals both in space and time, although some more research needs to be done to truly show this. One of the main questions we need to be answering is how do we try and reduce the number of fatal shark attacks? And no, the answer is not cull sharks. Education and awareness is a big one here. Assessing situations in the water should be the number one thing we as humans do before we enter these sharks' habitats. We don't want to be entering the water at certain times of day, for example, dawn or dusk, or when the water is particularly murky, as poor visibility may lead to a shark confusing you with a prey item. This includes swimming near estuaries where runoff from the land can end up in the sea. We also want to make sure we're not swimming near obvious prey items. Large bait balls of fish, seal colonies, and even whale carcasses are all signs not to enter the water. Another tool that has been suggested by campaigners is ensuring that beaches where shark attacks might be more common are all provided with life-saving medical equipment. Having items such as bandages, tourniquets and medical gauzes nearby on a beach can be the difference between someone living or dying from a shark bite. And this is something we should all be campaigning for. So while shark attacks may appear to be increasing, this isn't something that we should all be extremely worried about. Being educated on safe water use where these animals live is something that we should all have in our life skills locker. Thanks again for tuning in to today's episode. I hope you found it enjoyable and somewhat informative. And if you did, please do give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe to the Shark Bites channel below where you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then, see you next time.